you know, I was sitting here just thinking about my story. Because, you know, yesterday I actually was a project planning day where I was doing projective planning for the future. And I also kind of looked back. How did I get here? So this is my story of getting rich in America, a lesson in decisions. And it's kind of interesting because one of the first things that happened was I did not allow anyone to influence me or to shake me out of my planned future. I remember when I was broke, I remember when I was homeless, and I still had that mindset, that vision of living a great and good life. And I knew I could make it happen if I was willing to do the work, because this is for the folks who are looking for the shortcuts, folks who are essentially trying to rent seek, get money for doing absolutely nothing. And, you know, I put up the video where I had participated in some white collar crime. And after that, what did I do? I got a job. Then I got another job. And then I got another job. And then I got another job. And then eventually I started my own business. So it wasn't, quote, a shortcut. But part of that thinking is one of the reasons that so many people don't really have what they want in life because they're looking for shortcuts. This was a vision I had for myself in 1999. And it really did not start shaping up until 2010. I had the vision, I put in the work, I developed the economic devices, and it was a process of hard work, dedication, and putting some stuff together. And you know, if you want to get rich in America, it's very possible, but let's talk about some of the things that will prevent you. Let's talk about the shortcut stuff. This is one of the biggest obstacles to people getting money. They're looking for a way to get the money without doing the work. And I'm here to tell you, it ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And it, it, there's so many people who are trying to cheat the system, go around the system, create different ways around the system. Because here's the thing. To get rich in America, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be working hard. You're going to be working more than 40 hours a week. Yeah, you're going to be doing all of that. And this is something many people don't want to do. Looking at the current state of the country. The other day, people were protesting outside of Mitch McConnell's house over an additional $2,400 a month. Economic unemployment boost, $2,600 a month. People were protesting. And this shows you just how broke America is. And most Americans are broke or really close to broke. And you have to make the decision to do more so you will not be in that position. Because one of the biggest biggest problems that we have is the mismanagement of money and you know what you saw with this stimulus support of the economy that so many people don't have cash they don't have any cash they, they don't have any money set aside and they're not able to do anything and this is one of the first lessons because on my channel savage finance i talk about having cash and you know i even had someone like well you know i think glennon leading people wrong because he ain't talking about bitcoin and all these other esoteric investments and i'm just sitting there do you even have ten thousand dollars cash money in the bank really you know ten thousand dollars is not a lot of money twenty thousand dollars is not a lot of money thirty thousand dollars is not a lot of money and many, many people don't even have this 
in their personal financial situation. And we're not talking about a lot of money. Let me go ahead and tell you, if you were to have $50,000 cash money in the bank, a car that was paid off, no debt, you would be able to become a baller in the current America because you actually would become a man of means. Let me say this again. If you had $50,000 in the bank, car that was paid off, no credit card debt, and you were able to pay your bills and have a lot of money left over, you would enter into baller status because that is dissimilar to the way that so many people live. You would be baller status because you got money, you've got reserves, you could actually start a business, you could do so many things, and we're not talking about millions of dollars. You know, it's funny, a lot of people, when the lottery is kind of like regular, like, you know, if you play the lottery, you win 10 million, people are like, they ain't enough. You don't even have $10,000 in the bank, but you're talking about 10 million cash ain't enough. See, many people have a very bad money philosophy, and this is one of the things I learned. When I used to be like an average person, and when I was out there um living the average american life not knowing how to save money not knowing how to manage money not knowing how to make money i was doing dumb things like going to title pawn shops i was going to the pawn shop and pawning my cds and dvds remember when you could pawn your cds and dvds and they would give you good coin for that. And it, it was just this stupid cycle of a lack of economic preparedness. And what really got me out of that was a lot of pain. I remember one night I was in that boarding house and my mouth was literally throbbing because I had the need to get some dental work and I didn't have no money to get any dental work. So I laid there that whole night with my whole mouth just exploding. It got so bad that I had got up and we had a 24 hour Kroger around the corner. I walked to the Kroger, got some ore gel, rubbed it on my gums to get a little relief. And at that point, I was in physical pain. I was in financial pain. And this is what made me get my act together. This is what made me make different decisions this is what created a better process what created a better way of living what created a whole different mindset because i was like I, I gotta get out of this i gotta stop living like this so at that point i begin to make better decisions i begin to manage my money, you know, manage my little coins the best I could. And I begin to make long term plans. See, this is one of the fallacies that so many people don't do. People don't make long term plans. Like if you walk up to the average person and say, hey, what is your five year plan? What is your 10 year plan? They will look at you like you were from another planet because most people haven't thought that far ahead. And ooh, I remember when I was living in that boarding house, I got a temp job over in this neighborhood. And I said, I want to live in this neighborhood. So at that moment, I didn't have any money. I was in a bad situation. I was in the world of debt, didn't have a car. And I started making plans to live in this million dollar neighborhood. I started making plans, long term plans. Let me hear, you know, you could be broke. You can have no money. That is your now. That is, doesn't have to be your future if you start to alter your mindset and alter your behavior. Because there is a fundamental difference between people who have a lot of money and people who don't. And the people who have money usually take risk. See, there's calculated risk, there's crazy risk. Like, you know, let's talk about Bitcoin. There are so many people who are on this Bitcoin thing because if you bought it like really cheap, like I did, and it went up to a lot of money, you made a lot of money for doing nothing, rent seeking. 
And this is one of the biggest barriers to people making money is that they're trying to cheat the system. I'm here to tell you it's 2020. You sit down, you work hard, you come up with a plan and this year your life will get a little bit better. Just a little bit. Not a whole lot. Then next year your life will get a little bit better. Then year three, your life will start to get significantly better in year four and year five. And I'm here to tell you the truth because, you know, one of the things I know you guys are consistently bombarded with these advertisements that you can make 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars a month working minimum hours, hanging out with your family, doing all this other stuff. And I, I don't really, you know, I can't say because I, I just know that that isn't how it happened for me. I remember my first job that I was making decent money. They started me off at $38,000 a year, which adjusted for you know inflation. I would have started off with $60,000 if I started the job this year. And it was not life-changing money, but it was the most money that I ever made. And it created a situation where I was able to work one job and have time to work on other things. So what I was working on was essentially getting a better, higher paying job. That was my, my preoccupation. So I, I did that and I got my second job started off at 60,000, which would be like a oh, hundred K here. And then I got my third job and then I started my business. And that's when I begin to see the power of doing more. I had this good job. I was making, you know, six figures. I remember I did a crackhead move. I got my first big check and I went out and bought a brand new BMW, paid cash for it and spent all the money on the car. Didn't have money for taxes. And I remember when I walked in that dealership and it was just like, I didn't even haggle with them. I was just like, oh, that's the price. Okay, I'll be back. Work up, you know, actually tell me if I was coming here with a cashier's check, how much would the phone of the sun would be? Guy worked up the numbers, gave me a sheet of paper. I went to the bank, came back with a cashier's check. Booyah. Drove off in my new car. And I begin to see the power of serving people. Most of the stuff like Forex, day trading it only gives you money and you really don't benefit anyone else and this is why it's so hard to make money this is rent seeking but i was out meeting people uh was out showing people furniture i was serving people and the more people that i served the more money that i made and it began to start to click and then i had a situation where I was with the company and there's, there's one company I was trying to sell new furniture to. And they said, look, we need someone to sell our, you know, if you buy used furniture or sell it for us, then we'll buy new furniture from you. I go back to the owner company. He's like, we don't do that. Let it go. I was like, you don't do that. I do that. So I went ahead and created an LLC, got a written contract between me and this company. And I began to make 50% of whatever I sold. And that, you know, and I still have my job. See, you know, there's so many people who want to quit their job and then start a business and then instantly, you know, I mean, you're looking at two to three years for your business really starts making money for the average business unless it's a service business. And, you know, I was like, I had two sources of income, two sources of very well paying income. And I saw the power of money and I saw what happens when you put yourself in the position to win? I was working hard. I wasn't working like, you know, I was working um, probably 60, 70 hours a week, but it, but it didn't seem like it because the money was so good. The money was so incredible. And then after that, I started my own business. And then this is where I made a critical mistake. I started selling new furniture 
And the profit margins of new furniture is nothing compared to the profit margins of used furniture. And I actually did really well, did over a million my first year, but the profit, the profit was only like 40 K and I was so discouraged because I sold less selling used stuff. And then I was like, Oh, I need to find some used stuff. And this is what got me in the storage auction business. I went to newspapers. I started searching and this is how I found out they had these auctions and I went in there and I was well capitalized in a matter of months. I was making some really good money and I was enjoying myself. And that's not see this. This is the part of the story. See, I was enjoying myself. I was making money, but I was also learning lessons. I was learning how to sell. I was learning how to advertise. I was learning how to deal with customers. I was learning. And that is that learning when I was in the storage auction business helped me create my first digital product, which is what made me wealthy. So let's 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 go back. I was living in the boarding house. I had no money. I was broke. I was in this situation, but I came to this neighborhood on a temp job and I started making plans to live here. And part of the plan was I had to have my own business because I knew, I mean, unless you were like going to get a CEO level job or an attorney or a doctor or something like that, you ain't living in this neighborhood. It ain't happening. So I went ahead and I worked really, really hard with my digital business and I saw the power of creating products. I saw the power of serving people. And this is when everything changed. This is when I couldn't go back to my old life. This is when I began to understand how the real world works. When you serve people, when you create a product, when you become a creator or a producer, you 10 X your income or 20 X your income or 30 X your income or 40 X or 50 X your income. And this is where so many people go wrong because they're trying to cheat the system. Like if I did not get off into the storage auction business to learn those lessons, because see the storage auction business, I was able to make money in the storage auction business and I was able to make money after the storage auction business because I was able to sell that knowledge. This is one of the craziest things that I begin to understand. I begin to understand the power of doing. I begin to understand the power of being a creator. I begin to understand the power of putting together things. I begin to understand that power. I begin to understand the power of service. I begin to really, cause you know, I was doing okay with my first businesses, but see one of the lessons that I learned was amplification. And when I got on the internet, and I started to talk about my experiences in the storage auction business. When I began to amplify over the internet, all of that, that's when I began to understand how to really build a business. Cause see in the storage auction business, I was self-employed. I, I was a highly paid self-employed person because there was really, it was really tricky because the thing is with the new business that I have, there are systems and there's processes. You know, last year I had a heart attack and even though I was in the hospital healing and I didn't work for five months because my business, my business had systems and processes and things that I had set up before I got sick, I was still having money while I wasn't working. Let me say this again. I still had money coming in when, you know, I was in the hospital for about four weeks, got out the hospital and it took me about four months to recover. 
the whole time i still had money coming in the whole time because i had built because see with the internet it is very easy to build systems and processes and automation it is really easy there wasn't like that with the storage auction business and then once i learned that lesson because you know it, you know i've been doing this about 10 years and now i'm like oh oh i understand i understand now i understand and this is how i got rich in america by creating products and serving people this was the process for me like you know i'm not going to tell you you know like with forex i've been doing some research for forex for um savage finance and all of, you know most people who do forex lose money and i found one guy with a youtube channel and he said it took him five years to learn how to trade forex five years so i don't know if i'm gonna bring that on the savage finance and you know similar thing with day trading and these are the economic devices that people are trying to create because they don't want to have the burden of building a business, talking to customers, creating a product and selling it. And I'm here to tell you, it's the fastest way to get rich in America is to create a product or service and serve people. It is the fastest way. It is faster than Forex. It is faster than day trading. It is faster than, well, Amazon FBA is kind of kind of sort of serving people. It's kind of like that because you, you, you do have a product and you go out and you ship it to Amazon and they, they advertise it for you. So it's kind of like serving people. But I'm here to tell you what you need to do is start a business and create a product, create a service. And let me just go ahead and tell you the truth it's going to be a few years before you start rocking and rolling and this is one of the biggest issues that so many people have is that they want to secure the bag immediately because they don't want to work just just keep it the buck here on these internet streets they don't want to work they don't want to go through the fog they don't want to have to sweat they don't want to do this. And I've seen this over and over again with some of my entrepreneur friends. I've seen people like um, you can look at the Flood Brothers. It's a service company here in Atlanta. I remember when Bobby Flood came to kn knock on the door at Renacrate. Bobby, he, he cold called. He just showed up. Hey, this, my name is Bobby Flood. This is what we do. And they built that into a multi-million dollar business. I saw it because see, once you get into the business community and you start hanging around entrepreneurs, seeing entrepreneurs, getting to know people, you begin to see the process. And in the beginning, I'm here to tell you, it's going to be kind of rough. It's going to be hard. You are not going to be securing the bag in like a few months. And like I had someone who um, same thing with YouTube. Same thing with YouTube, like Graham Stephan, he does like $250,000 a month. It took him two, almost three years to start really rolling, really rolling. And people were just like, I, I don't want to pay dues. And one of the things that Graham did that was, he was very consistent with posting videos. He posted three times a week for about two and a half years before he started taking off. And you know, there, there's so many people who are not trying to do that work they're not trying to create a process a system like when i was in the store auction business i took a lot of l's because i was learning i was learning like you know this is how i became good in the storage auction business but observation i was you know in the beginning i was just buying stuff like everyone else it's like i can move move that pretty easily and that informed my buying decision but I began to notice that the people who had the long money who were consistently paying ridiculous, in my mind, what I thought were ridiculous prices for units, were buying big pack units. So I started to duplicate their behavior. And I, I, I mean, I had to stretch myself. I didn't have a truck, so I had to rent a truck and actually we get to the point where we're leasing the truck from Enterprise. But once I started buying these big pack units, 
I was getting these units, I was getting way more merchandise to sell proportionally cheaper than buying these little small units. This is what I'm talking about. This is, you know, you, you have to get in the game to learn how to play the game. You have to be playing the game against bigger, better, stronger competitors so you can up your game. And I was like, oh, that's why they be buying these big full pack units from the ruler to the to the from the ruler to the to the. Oh, and this is where I started to get the jackpot units. This is where things um, dramatically turned around for me in the storage auction business. I was like, oh, oh, that's how it works. That's the game. That's how it goes down. And one of the things that I, I like, I learned that lesson because I was playing the game. If I wasn't playing the game, I wouldn't have never learned that lesson. And that's how you get rich in America by doing, creating and putting together your game plan. So you, you got to get out there and you got to get busy. You got to be about the hustle. You got to be about the drive. You got to be about making that money. And it's a process. And the more you play, the harder you play, the better you become. That's the game. That's how you get rich in America. It's about doing. It's about learning. It's about observation. That's the game. And if you're not playing the game, you have no chance of winning. This is why I don't really talk about if I won the lottery. I don't play the lottery. So there's no way that I will ever win the lottery. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you in the next video.